Hello and welcome to Whoever You Thought You Were, You're a Jew, the TV show that teaches the ignored truths of history. We also teach this concept over here and we try to get away from this one, the golden calf. Today's show is called Race, and I can't think of a subject where the expression the ignored truths of history is more apt than this one. When we talk about race, we're talking about that group of people that white people sometimes call niggers. I wonder how many of you actually know what that word means. You will by the end of this show. Now, <clears throat> if I were to tell you that blacks once had a great culture which exceeded the culture of whites, you'd probably find that pretty incredible. But we're talking about the ignored truths of history. Those of you who've been watching this show may perhaps recall that several weeks ago, we talked about the fact that most of the Jews alive in the world today may actually be descendants of Russian converts. Now, Jews like to consider themselves to be descendants of Israel. So the fact that Russia was once a Jewish nation for 500 years, in fact, and that most Jews who are alive today may be more closely descended from Attila the Hun than from King Solomon, these are facts which are just glaring facts, and it, it's incredible that such things could be ignored. And the question of how such things could be ignored has an answer, and the answer is collusion. All the parties involved have silently agreed, even perhaps without ever talking to each other, they've silently agreed to just not discuss this subject. In the case of the Russian Khazar Jews, it's embarrassing and frightening to Jews to consider the possibility that they may actually be descendants of converts and may have very little Israeli blood in them. In the case of the Russians, it's a horrendous embarrassment to them to admit that for 500 years in the Middle Ages, Russia was a Jewish nation. So they just ignore it. It's collusion. Now, if I were to tell you that blacks, for as many centuries as whites have been uh, superior, if you want, in the Western world, that for just as many centuries blacks were superior, you'd probably find that hard to believe. And you'd wonder how such a fact could be hidden. And the answer is, again, collusion. The whites wouldn't want to admit such a thing, because whites like to feel superior and like to think that their superiority is somehow permanent, decreed by God. As for blacks, if you look into the black civilizations that we're going to take a look at momentarily, you find something pretty interesting. You find that those civilizations actually arose as Jewish civilizations, later to become Islamic civilizations. Now, we live in a nation where blacks are taught that whitey got ahead by being a liar and a thief. So today's so-called black leaders get on the air and proclaim that the way to get ahead in America is for the black man to be a better liar and thief than whitey. I don't know about you, but I've thought about this matter, and there's no question in my mind as to where these so-called black leaders come from. They were put up there by whitey. Now I'm not going to name any names. But the truth of the matter is that the roots of black greatness historically lay in Judaism and Islam. So the blacks who are teaching today that the answer to the question, how do you get ahead, is get the money, dollar, dollar, bill, y'all. You folks know who I'm talking about, and that's what they teach. They don't want to hear any talk about God. For these people, the dollar, dollar, bill, y'all crowd, the realization that black greatness in the past lay in uh, roots which go into Judaism and Islam is not really what they want to hear. So they just ignore it. As for the blacks in this country who are not dollar dollar bill y'all people, we find that most of them are members of Christian churches, which is a good thing, except for the fact that they've been taught since childhood that Judaism and Islam are the enemy. And they've been taught that lesson so well that when they start to hear that the roots of black greatness historically lay in Islam, that that's as far as they're going to go with that. They'll take slavery, thank you. So there you have it, collusion. For whitey, it's great to keep black down. And for the blacks, 
it's great to not admit that in the past you were a Jew and later a Muslim. Now we're going to talk about the truths of history, the ignored truths. These truths are known to you if you're a black Muslim in America. You already know this if you're a black Muslim. But if you're a black treated in those whorehouses and condom vending machine buildings that we call public schools, then you probably don't know this. And if you're a white, you almost certainly don't know this. Let's talk a little bit about black history and let's start with a map. This is a map of the uh, area around the Mediterranean Sea. <coughs> Up here we have Europe. Here's Africa. I think you can see on your screens that in this area of Africa that I'm pointing to is a desert. This, of course, is the Sahara Desert. The territory to the north is fertile, and the territory to the south is fertile. In fact, it's very fertile. Now let's talk about empires. The first great empire in Western civilization was probably Egypt, over here. Not much is known about the early Egyptian empire. There's lots of speculation. But in the process of time, the empire passed. Uh, Israel was great for a short time, but that didn't last either. Now, I don't have to tell you that a great empire arose in Greece. Uh, most historians of uh, intellectual Western history trace the history of Western intellectualism to Greece. Now, the Greek empire didn't last too long, a number of centuries. One could reasonably ask why Greece became so great and why it was unable to hold on to its greatness. One could write whole books on that subject, and I'm sure that lots of such books have been written. But the fact of the matter is that for whatever reason, the Greek Empire rose, the Greek Empire fell. Subsequently, Western civilization moved over here to Italy. That's, of course, what we now call the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire at its peak stretched from Spain all the way around the Mediterranean, encompassing Arabia and parts of northern Africa. The Roman Empire lasted longer than just about any other, better part of a thousand years. But in the process of time, Rome passed as well. There was a Persian Empire, which had its roots over here in Persia, uh, actually over here, Iran. The Persian Empire at its peak stretched from Egypt, encompassing most of the Middle East, just about up to Greece. And the Persian Empire passed as well. The end of the Persian Empire came, uh, oh, I guess around the year uh, 640 or so, when uh, the armies of Muhammad began to conquer the Middle East, a process which was completed with lightning rapidity. So the next great empire was the Empire of Islam, an empire which, in many respects, has not ended to this day. It arose in Saudi Arabia, immediately conquered the entire Middle East, conquered Persia. The Persian Empire was Zoroastrian, Zoroastrian in religion. They, they got rid of that, replaced it with Islam. They tried desperately to get into Europe at this end and failed, but what they did do was they came across North Africa, and North Africa fell to the Muslims. It fell quickly, 